Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and we're continuing series on the PlayStation 1 based arcade hardware and the games that ran on it. And today we're going to be talking about Fighting Layer. And a lot of you guys have been asking me to cover this game on the channel, so good news, we're going to be doing it today. And it is an absolutely absurd and amazing arcade fighting game made by Arika, the same company that made Street Fighter EX2 Plus we talked about some weeks ago. But unlike that game, this is published by Namco and it runs on the Namco System 12 and not the Capcom ZN2. Same company, different hardware. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. But otherwise, let's get right into the game. If you've ever played an Eureka 3D Fighter, you're going to know what to expect here, but I absolutely love this game. It's definitely faster than EX2 and all of the EX variants, and I do appreciate that. It has an absolutely outstanding combo system and just an overall amazing PlayStation 1 aesthetic visual, but of course, this is on the System 12, not on the PlayStation 1, so it's going to look like an enhanced graphics spec. But I kid you not, and I will show you shortly, this is a fighting game in which you get to fight an actual great white shark. No jokes, it's going to come up soon. But honestly, everything about this game is just fast and fluid, intriguing, and fun. Erika knew how to make a 3D fighting game, and I feel like they actually did a better job here with their own property than they did with something like Street Fighter EX2+. Plus. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love that game, but it is fun to see them take on their own franchise with their own characters versus using the Street Fighter universe and franchise from Capcom. But the interesting thing is Blair here was in the Street Fighter EX games, and now she is fighting on an Arika game published by Namco. I've absolutely no idea how they cleared the rights for all that, but it's just a thing that exists and it's a weird and fun crossover. And there is a sequel to this game as well, Fighting Lair EX, which is spectacularly fun in its own right, but way too modern for a PlayStation 1 arcade hardware series. But just watching the matches here, I just love how fast and fluid this game is. All of the grapples, all of the strikes just feel incredible. But the number one reason I always remember this game, and I hope you do too, is the fact that you actually have to fight and beat a great white shark to move on with the game. It is just straight up underwater shark fighting action. It is strange, I do not understand it whatsoever, but I absolutely love it. It reminds me of a particular zombie movie where they fight a zombie and a shark underwater at the same time and if you know the name of that comment below I'd be curious if you've ever watched it but it's just such a spectacle I'm 100% there for it, even if I do get mauled as I fight him but this is just a ton of fun and you will see there there's a branching pathway that I will show you shortly but when you play this game, it's 10 minutes of straight action, and I love how it runs and looks on the hardware. This is fast, this is fluid, all of the combos, the sidestepping, how you charge up different attacks, all just feel so incredible. Arika had a great sense of how to make a 3D fighting game long before somebody like Capcom knew how to do it with Street Fighter 4, and that's why Capcom had them make the EX series of games for them. But you'll just see here as you're comboing into the corner, I do like how small the arenas are. You really need to worry about navigating. But again, just like in the EX games, the backgrounds are mostly flat. It seems like they used all the graphical power to be able to deal with all of the character models versus anything that exciting in the background. But moving on to another stage, you'll see here in this aquarium, it just does look really nice with those sharks and fish swimming around in the background, kind of showing you you're going to be fighting a shark soon. But it's just an amazing fighting game, and it's one that really doesn't get talked about anywhere near as much, because there are only two games in the franchise, but you'll see here, when you're playing the game well, you can get that perfect finish, and we're going to quickly follow into a double perfect. When you learn a character, when you understand their combos, how they play, and move around on the screen, this game feels so fast and fluid. I would put it up there with some of the original Tekken games as far as fluidity is concerned. Maybe a little bit of a controversial statement, but I do stand by it. But leave me a comment down below and tell me how you feel about that. And also tell me if you've ever played this game before, because I would be curious who has played it and who is just seeing it for the first time here, because it seems like there's a lot of fans for it, because it was one of my most requested videos. But again, just fighting a great white shark is hilarious, and I will say it's probably the hardest character in the game to beat outside of the final boss. It just swims around, it's got a gigantic range, when it grapples you with those teeth, it's going to take like a quarter chunk of your health bar out, but I love when we beat him, he just floats upside down like a dead fish. But this game also has an absolutely spectacular soundtrack, so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll be right back.
just an absolutely spectacular soundtrack and it does have some tonal similarities to the street fighter ex soundtrack but that makes perfect sense because the developers behind this game made that as well but again, I just love how fast these matches move here. And you'll see there, I lit my opponent on fire. When they are running towards you, if you touch them, you're going to get burnt as well. But just like in EX, there are super cancels as well. I was about ready to get supered there, but you can cancel out of them if your timing is right. And if you do enjoy the Street Fighter EX series, you can 100% come over to Fighting Layer EX and be pretty good at the game relatively quickly because they do share so many mechanics. But again, just down to the visual presentation of this game, this is one of the better stages for that background. Sure, it's flat and there's not really any parallax going on, but the detail in the background does look really good. And now that we move on to the final boss, we can talk about this the cheapness in the final boss but honestly it's a fighting game in the arcades every boss is going to be cheap i will say that this game is very fair until you get to the very end of the game right here against volo the first round is almost a gimme it is pretty much easy to beat him every single time but you'll see soon what happens in the second round but again, just him zooming around the screen going wild, this game's pacing is great if you like a fast-paced 3D fighting game. If that's not to your liking, maybe just get used to it and try to enjoy this game because there's a ton of fun to be had here, especially if you get a friend and you start playing it as a two-player game. It is an absolute blast, but the sense of sen speed and sensation of just movement in this game 100% works for what the developers are trying to do. It's running at 60 frames a second the entire time, and the fluidity is just there. But you'll see I take the first match against the boss, but then from here it's basically like the game just needs a little bit more money off of you before you're going to see the ending because suddenly he becomes so predictive and starts doing this reversal attack that basically does nothing but drain your health bar. Every single time you hit him, it just reverses into something else and you can see my health bar just 100% run out there until I lose this match. It definitely feels like one of the cheaper mechanics in the fighting game outside of something like Princess Sissy from Matra Melee and it just happens no matter what character you use. So it's a little bit unfortunate but it doesn't really take much away from the game because honestly if I struck arcade fighting games for having cheap final bosses I'd have to pretty much say every single fighting game ever made is no good because of that situation but we got super finished and we can move on from there. But I love the character selection as well. Obviously, only a few of these characters are even going to be remotely familiar from the Street Fighter franchise, but every single character has their own fighting style, and it really does work within the context of the game, and those grapples are going to be super important as well. But it's not surprising that a game like Fighting Lair did not take off anywhere near as much as Street Fighter EX did, because Street Fighter obviously had that lineage behind it. If you're walking in an arcade and you see a new 3D fighting game that's got the Street Fighter name on it, you're 100% going to want to play it. If you see something like Fighting Lair, you might not get that same level of intrigue. But I do love that there is a branching path in this game, and this knight just falls from the ceiling, very similar to a boss character that falls from the ceiling in Samurai Showdown 64. Really weird that a game that came out in the same year has the same sort of thing going on. But if you beat the knight, you get to go in one route on the map. If you lose to him, you get to go in another route. And I will say, even more so than the shark, the knight here is just an absolute beast with so much health, generally 9 out of 10 times, you are 100% going to lose and have to go on the bottom path but it's still fun even if you lose and I just love the knight as a character how he fades away when he wins the match but I mean honestly fighting Lair is just spectacular and what other game lets you fight a shark I know Tekken had Kuma and different animal characters but honestly I don't think anything's ever been more hilarious and more absurd than fighting a great white underwater in a fighting game and for that reason alone this game is just 100% legit. I love it. It's weird. It's quirky. But the fighting game mechanics are here. And if you're into 3D fighting games and you've never played it, you 100% have to give it a shot. Short of that, I'll be back next week with more PlayStation 1 arcade-based videos. I'll have videos throughout the week as well. But if you go swimming today, make sure you bring your boxing gloves because you might have to fight a shark. Bye-bye.